Welcome to the next part of the Rick and Morty app series in Swift. We are going to pick up where we left off, and that is building out the episode detail view. Hit that like button before we get into things. Share out the series if you're enjoying it, and let's continue. So basically, we are not compiling at the moment. We're not able to build because it's yelling at me that we haven't created a collection view here. I had briefly mentioned as a refresher, we're going to use a collection view here with a compositional layout and we're going to show um, a different looking layout from what we had uh, used over here. And let me actually go ahead and rerun our app. Let me pause that. But we're, we're going to use a different layout from what we had used over here, though we are going to use similar constructs. So let's create this collection view here and let's not have it yell at me so we can actually build and run. So we'll create a collection view of type collection view. It's gonna take a frame and a layout. This layout I'll create up above in a moment. We're gonna return set collection view. Don't forget that we wanna use constraints so we do need to assign this property to false. And let's go ahead and create that compositional layout up here. We'll go ahead and say this is a UI compositional layout, which is a UI collection view compositional layout. We're going to use the section provider again. This will be our index. We are going to totally ignore that. And inside of here, we want to go ahead and actually return a, a layout. So we're going to say a layout for and we'll go ahead and actually change this index to be section. And we're gonna create these functions down here. So let me put an extension onto this view just to visually separate our code. It's a good practice and it also helps with my sanity. So I'm gonna go ahead and say private func layout for a section. And this is going to return a NS collection uh, or a NS collection layout uh, section is what I'm looking for. So let me see where that is. Here it is. All right, if you try to build, it's gonna yell at me down here now. And let's see why it's yelling up here. Is it because it's private? Can I find value of non-function type? Let's see. Let's go ahead and drop the private on that. And it actually still can't find it. Let's see why that is. Did I name it incorrectly? Layout for section. And did I add the extension on the proper thing? I believe I did here. So let's see what the error is. Cannot call value of non-function type. This totally is a function here. So let me just return something. And let's see why this is yelling at me. We'll say, oh, it's because it's, I think it's referencing this layout up here. So Xcode being Xcode. So we are gonna do that again, a layout for section. And it's gonna yell at me now that this thing returns an integer where we wanted to actually return a layout. Alrighty. So we're gonna return a NS layout section, a NS collection layout section. I can never remember what it's actually called. And let me just create a dummy one in here. So we are going to want a item first and foremost, so it doesn't yell at me. This will be a item with a layout size. We'll create this layout sized with a fractional width. We'll do one. This will be a fractional height of one. Next up, we want a group, and I'm just basically sticking something in here. We are gonna have um, a few different sections, but I'm just sticking something in here so it at least compiles. Here, we're gonna have a group. We're gonna do a vertical group. We're gonna have a layout size. And here, we'll do fractional width, which will be one. The height, I'll go ahead and do absolute, which will be 100. The sub items that we are going to use is the only item we've created up above. Next up, we're going to have our section itself, which will be a NS collection layout section. And we're going to create it with our group and just return that section. So cool. So it's actually building now, which is great. Let's go ahead and uh, add our spinner and collection view as a sub view here. So here we do create this collection view. It returns as non-optional, so I will do this so we can actually assign it. We're gonna say view add, actually we're already in a view. So we'll say add sub views, the collection view, as well as the spinner. And we do have a spinner up here. And let's go ahead and also on this say hide when uh, stopped, which will be true. 
And by default, we want this to just start and show the spinner. So I'm going to say spinner dot start animating. And we also want this collection view to be hidden by default. So we'll say is hidden is true. And alpha, we're going to make um, zero, aka it's going to be totally opaque. And we're going to fade it in like we did before with uh, with uh, a animation. So it looks a little more nice. All right, so let's see what else we want to do. Let's do some constraints here. We're going to say this has a height anchor, which will be a constraint with a constant. We'll go ahead and do that again for the width anchor. And let's actually pin this to the middle of our view. So we'll say here the center x, so the x-axis, will be equal to the center x of the container, which is our detail view. Same for the y. And then we'll go ahead and do some stuff for our collection view. Now, our collection view is indeed optional, so I am going to unwrap it here. We'll say collection view equals our collection view. Otherwise, we'll return. And then here we can add some constraints. So we're going to say top anchor is going to basically be top anchor. This is going to be pinned to all four sides. So we'll say top left, right, and bottom. And it's not lost on me that I'm going through this a little quickly because it's a little redundant at this point, but I will do my best to explain things if they do differ. So let's go into here and click on one of these. We see a spinner in the middle now, but we also see this obnoxious red color. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now, the other thing that I want to go ahead and do is as follows. So this collection view we currently have not set a delegate data source or uh, registered any cells. So I am going to assign both of those to self. The view will not only serve as the delegate, but it'll also serve as the data source. So let's go ahead and do that here. And I'm purposely showing you guys how you can make the view model controller or the view the delegate and the data source. And the design is a little subjective, but this way, at least you have all the different uh, variants in your tool belt. So we're gonna have number of sections. We'll just do one for now. Number of items, we'll do uh, one for now. We're gonna want cell for item, so we can return a cell. And we are also gonna have a did select, so we can actually go ahead and select a character, right? Because we are gonna show characters that appeared in a given episode. And this line here basically just deselects it, aka it unhighlights it. So let's uh, register a base cell here, just so we can actually have something to test with. We're going to say UI collection view cell dot self with an ID of cell like so. And let's just DQ and return it here, so it doesn't actually yell at me, and we can actually build. We'll say cell is going to be. Let's do that again. Let's sell is our collection view. We're going to DQ a cell with that ID. Don't forget to return it. And I'm going to say its background color, not view, background color, is going to be yellow. We'll go ahead and maybe make this 10 cells. And once we assign this view model, what I want to do is a twofold. So we are going to say did set we want to stop the uh, spinner. So we are going to say spinner dot stop animating. And then we want to say self dot collection view is no longer hidden once we have our view model stuff, our data basically. And then we also want to uh, fade it in. So we're going to use a animate with duration 0 0.3. We don't want to delay. And the animation that we want is basically change the alpha of our collection view to be one. And let's go ahead and give this a run. I think we're already fetching our data, so we should see a collection view load in with our bright yellow cells. So cool, we definitely do see it. It loads in pretty nicely, but instead of actually showing a yellow cell, um, we do want to actually show the appropriate information. The reason it looks like a gigantic blob and not uh, you know nice, cells is because we need to add um, margin for each of the particular cells and at the moment um, the way our layout looks is it's not conducive to show the separators so i think it's called content insets 
And these are going to be UI edge insets, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see what the type of this is. So these are actually NS directional insets. So we'll do NS directional insets here, edge insets. And we're going to say maybe 10, 10, 10, and 10. I just want to make sure we're actually seeing the individual cells here. Okay, beautiful. We are, and in that case, actually it loaded super duper quick, so you couldn't even see the fade, um, which I guess is not a bad thing. So now that we've got all of this, let's actually talk about what do we what do we want to show? So we basically want two types of sections. One section we're going to have a horizontal cell that's going to show the core data, such as um, name, air date, and episode. And then we want another section where we're basically going to show cells like these, right? These are our character cells, if you recall, and we want to show a particular character um, for that cell. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll at least stub out in our view model how this is going to look. What we're going to have is we are going to have uh, section types in here. So let's create a enum called section type. And the first section type is essentially going to be uh, information. The second section type is going to be characters. We're going to use associated types again. And for characters, I think we already have a character collection view cell view model, which is what we're going to reuse. And for information, we're going to use a collection of view models as well. And this is going to be a RM uh, episode info uh, collection view cell view model. So we are going to create this since that doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and create this, a related view, and then we'll wrap up the video there. And then we're gonna start putting those views and view models together in the upcoming video. So in the episode, I'm gonna actually go ahead and let me actually also move um, this into episode. Well, I guess this is character detail. So. Let me create our episode detail. Let me create a new folder called episode details. We'll move this into here. And I'm going to create a new file, which will be a new view. It's going to be a UI collection view cell. RM episode info collection view cell, dropping the view model. Go ahead that and uh, go ahead and create that. I feel like I've said go ahead a million times. Um, let me open up view models here and similar to what we have done for the uh, character detail, I will create a folder called episode detail. I'll move the episode detail file into here and I'll create a view model Swift file. And this is basically going to be the class that drives that we can probably get away with making it a struct and if you think about it all we're going to want to show is maybe we'll have like a title of like air date and then the value right below it so we kind of just want two strings in here i'm going to go ahead and say public let title which will be a string and public let value which will just be a string if you go ahead and try to build everything should hopefully be compiling we have our section types defined in here now. What I'm going to specifically want to do now is we're going to create a public collection and it's going to be a variable and it's going to be sections and it's going to be a collection of section type. Now we want this to be public, but we don't want the public world to be able to set to this, AKA like delete the sections or modify it. So we are going to say private set. So you might not have seen this before, but this lets you know this property be public, but not on, not for um, writing to it, only for reading to it. So this is public read, but privately we can only assign to it inside of this particular uh, file. So that's where I'll cut this video. We're in pretty good shape to actually construct these view models in the next video and then start uh, designing that info cell. And we already have got that character cell. So uh, wrapping up this screen should be rather quick. So thanks for watching. Drop a like before clicking away. You guys know the drill at this point. Hopefully I will see you in the next part.